Hi, welcome to Ms. Cooper's art class. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a maze, but also make it a portrait. You're going to need a pencil. Um, I'm using a Pigma Micron Pen 0.08 and a Sharpie, but you could use any other kind of thick or thin pens or markers, as long as they're not erasable. So the first step to making a maze is to draw your correct path through the maze in pencil. So I'm going to draw that and add just one or two dead ends along the way as I go. After that, you're going to want to draw the other random paths that are supposed to deceive the person who is working through the maze. So make these as complicated or as easy as you'd like. After that, you'll take your micron or your non-erasable pen and draw a line between every pencil line that you see to close off these paths. Make sure and check your work and then you can erase. So that's the basic part of making a maze. And I have a video about how to do that if you'd like to see that more in depth. But let's talk about adding value to your maze, which you're going to need for your portrait. So I'm going to make a sphere. You'll notice I left a lot of room for the highlight and now I'm drawing a lot of smaller squiggles to form that kind of crescent shaped core shadow. And I'll add a couple extra paths. After that, it's time to go into the micron and outline everything. I even closed off my highlight just to keep it really, really bright because that's not really a part of the functioning maze. It's more like a decorative part of my maze. So go in with that micron. My mazes tend to look like brains if you draw them my way. Then we'll go ahead and erase. And if you need to, you can add some extra paths just to add to that value and make the other parts pop out. It's not perfect, but that's okay. That's just going to help with the portrait look since we're doing a complicated shape when we do a portrait. Mine is already outlined in pencil. You will want to outline it in pencil at first because you're going to leave some gaps when you go in with the Sharpie. So you would be able to erase those gaps. So let's talk about how to Sharpie this. Um, you'll want to mark out your start and end points and keep those clear of Sharpie so that you can actually enter and exit the maze. And then you'll go in with your Sharpie. It could be something other than a Sharpie as long as it's something that's not going to erase or smudge because you will be going over basically the whole thing with eraser. I added some extra details, some hairlines, other things like that, things that are going to make people know for sure that it is a portrait and make it really stand out. So I'm going to add those extra hairlines and I'm going to add my eyes and close some things off. I am leaving some gaps. You'll notice one in the hair above my forehead. That way I can move through the maze. If I were to accidentally close off the face, I wouldn't be able to add any workable paths there when I go in with pencil. The irises of the eyes I did close off and the same with the eyebrows because I don't really want to, to touch those with the pencil. I have my reference photo ready and in black and white. Having it in black and white is a little bit easier. It helps you find those values. So now I'm going to draw the correct path through my maze first. And I'm going to make it just a little bit more squiggled, a little bit more complicated when I get to some shadowed areas. You can see that I'm utilizing those gaps that I made in the side of the face. Now the other thing that I'm using to help with this portrait is line direction. On the hair, hopefully you'll notice that I've been moving in a lot of vertical lines and other diagonals that kind of move with the waves of my hair. And then when I move on to the face, I kind of tend to curve the line direction with the part of the face that I'm on. This is going to help it look more like a portrait, especially if you're working kind of small, like I am. If you were working on something bigger, like maybe an 18 by 24 piece of paper, you might not have to worry as much about this, but it does make it look a, a bit better artistically. Make sure you don't press too hard with the pencil or it will be a, a little bit hard to erase. It's kind of fun to draw all those extra paths and you can make it as easy or as complicated as you want to, and if it smears a little bit, that's okay because you're going to erase it anyway. So it kind of works out just fine. You could think about backgrounds and making meaning for your maze as well. I chose not to because I'm demonstrating, but there's a lot you can do with this idea of a maze. So now I'm going in with my micron. I'm using an 08 micron. I think that's a, a, a good size for this one. So now I'm going to add micron between every path that I just drew. So something to consider when you're drawing your paths is that anywhere you draw, you're going to be adding kind of twice as many lines to that area. So anything that you need to remain light, 
you really can't draw a lot of paths there. I think if there was anything I would change about this one, I would have gone a bit lighter with my path drawing in some of the areas on my skin that I needed to look really light, like the cheeks, and maybe would have done more in the hair. The other thing you can do is vary your line thickness or your line weight. You Maybe I could have used a thinner micron on my face and then a thicker micron on the hair to make those two things be really different values. So that's something that you can play with when you are making your own that I might like to do in a future video. I am thinking of doing more maze drawing videos, so if you want to see more of those, definitely subscribe. All right, now it's time to erase. I chose to just focus on the face part, but there's so much meaning you could do with this idea of a maze um, that you could think about your background, adding other objects. I think there are a lot of stories to be told with this idea of a maze, and even if it's not solvable, it still works. All right, but that is it for the main maze part. Um, I did add a little bit more value by adding to the irises, just adding some lines, and then just adding a couple little extra paths in the maze just to help with the, that value a little bit more. But now you know a little bit more about maze drawing. I'd love to see what you do. I do have an email in my about section if you ever want to send me your work. Um, comment your questions. I'd be happy to respond. And again, subscribe for more because I'm thinking of doing more of these videos. I had a lot of fun with this one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and happy drawing.